Ah, for the good old days. Wasn't that a beautiful Model T? And then again, wasn't that a beautiful BMW? It all depends on your point of view. One thing is for certain, the old cars were easy to repair. Well, things have changed. Added conveniences and government regulations, anti-skid and airbags, four-wheel drive and four-wheel steering, even environmental temperature control. The method, electronics, computers, the little black box. The Corporate Training Department of Standard Motor Products presents this video training program as part of our continuing effort to keep you up to date on how to repair today's cars and remain profitable. This standard electronic engine controls training module covers the Honda electronic engine control system. In order to confidently and profitably repair these systems, the mechanic must have certain hand tools and test equipment. Also, he should have a working knowledge of the basics of electronic engine controls and have an understanding of engine computer control systems. He should also be familiar with the concepts of open loop and closed loop. And most important, he should be familiar with electrical and electronics diagnostic procedures. By now, I'm sure you're wondering, where is this program going? What will I learn? I don't work on import cars. Well, you're not alone. Many mechanics don't think they work on import cars. But what is a Ford probe? Who makes the Chevy Prism? It's probably safe to say that aside from factory dealers or import specialists, most mechanics do not feel comfortable with what they know about import cars. So as you follow along with this video program, we will provide all the information needed to profitably repair the Honda electronic engine control system. Ready? The Honda system, you will see, can be as easy to repair as the average Ford or Chevrolet. Late model Hondas are equipped with an onboard diagnostic system that will aid you in troubleshooting. Before we begin repairing some on-vehicle problems, let's quickly review the Honda control system. It is important to consider the following questions. What is the system trying to accomplish? What does each of the components do? and how do they interact with each other to affect the operation of the vehicle. The main objective of the system is to allow the vehicle to meet federal emission standards and give good fuel mileage. While accomplishing these two goals, the vehicle must still supply good acceleration and smooth operation to satisfy the customer. Honda's electronic computer control system has been used extensively throughout their model lineup since the early 80s. The early systems used computerized engine control for both electronic ignition and feedback carburetor control. Later systems are used with electronic ignition and PGM-FI, programmed fuel injection. You should note that the information and procedures outlined in this program are directly usable on the Acura and Sterling. Let's begin by reviewing the operation and function of the engine control system. Then, we will look at the system's components and how they relate to each other and the engine control computer. The central control unit, or ECU, is the heart of the system. The computer takes sensor readings that monitor the engine and environmental information. This information is processed or fed through a computer, which can be referred to as an ECU or CPU. This information from the sensors is compared to programs stored in memory in the computer. The computer then responds with signal outputs to various control devices. You may think of the various sensor readings as being able to modify or change the basic programs in the computer. The basic programs are designed to control three primary areas. One, the ignition system. Two, the fuel control system. And three, the emission control system. During this program, we will concentrate on the computer as it relates to the ignition system and the emission system. Details on the fuel injection system as it relates to the engine control computer will be discussed in the high-grade fuel systems training program on Honda. In addition to supplying outputs to various control devices, the central computer also monitors itself and the particular sensors involved in the information string. If a malfunction takes place in the computer, or if one of the sensors were to fail, 
the computer can switch to a fail-safe or limp-in mode during operation. In this configuration, the vehicle will run, but normally very poorly. The engine control computer can be located in one of three locations depending on the year, make, and model. On the Honda Prelude, the computer is located on the left-hand side of the car next to the rear passenger, or as Honda would state, on the driver's center pillar. Also, the atmospheric pressure sensor is located in the same location. In other models, the computer can be found either under the driver's seat or underneath the passenger seat. It is important to know the location of the central computer because the diagnostics display is a set of LEDs located in the computer. Let's take a closer look. The ECU receives sensor input readings from the crank angle sensor, manifold absolute pressure sensor, MAP, a vehicle speed sensor, a coolant temperature sensor, intake air temperature sensor, throttle position sensor, oxygen sensor, battery voltage, starter signal, atmospheric pressure sensor, and a series of miscellaneous switches, including an air conditioning signal, automatic transmission shift position signal, etc. The ECU processes this information and compares the information to programs in memory. The computer then responds with signal outputs to control the injectors, the fuel pump relay, various idle control solenoids consisting of automatic transmission, air conditioning, fast idle, cold idle, etc., an ignition timing control solenoid valve, an EGR control solenoid valve, canister purge solenoid valve, the check engine light or PGM-FI light, and the LEDs on the computer itself that read diagnostic codes. You should remember that not all vehicles utilize all of the inputs or all of the outputs. You should always consult service literature for the exact year, make, and model for the exact components utilized and their location. Even though this program deals primarily with the engine control computer and ignition and emission systems, let's take a quick look at Honda's program fuel injection system for reference. This system is based on the speed density principle. There is no mass airflow sensor or vane meter used in this fuel injection system. The system consists of the components in the air management system, air filter and duct work, and the throttle body assembly. If the vehicle has a manual transmission, the throttle body also contains a dash pot and or a dash pot check valve. Mounted on the side of the throttle body is the air bypass valve assembly for the fast idle mechanism. Here is the idle adjusting screw. The throttle position or a throttle angle sensor is mounted to the throttle shaft on the side of the throttle body. Also, part of the intake system are a series of solenoids and valves. They are part of the idle control system. Honda does a nice job of locating most of the valves on the intake system and the solenoid controls in a control box mounted next to the firewall. As we look inside the control box, there is an idle control solenoid valve, a fast idle control solenoid valve, the automatic transmission control solenoid valve, and an AC idle boost solenoid valve, and others. The vacuum hose routing is very neat, connecting the intake manifold at the plenum to the control box and then back to the particular valve. The fast idle control valve, the AC idle boost valve, and the automatic transmission idle control valve. Remember to always tag the vacuum hoses when they are disconnected. Also, they are a real nightmare to troubleshoot when a leak develops. The fuel management system contains a fuel pump mounted inside the fuel tank. The fuel pump supplies fuel to a very fine filter mounted here on the firewall. The fuel then flows through the fuel rail to each of the individual injectors. Excess fuel not used by these injectors then flows through a pressure regulator and back to the tank. Note, this system does not contain a cold start injector. The computer's sensor inputs control the fuel injection system based on pre-programmed memory. As long as the engine receives a crank angle sensor reading, 
and a manifold absolute pressure sensor reading, the fuel pump relay will receive a signal supplying fuel to the injectors. The injector pulse duration or pulse width is controlled by the computer in a basic fuel discharge time frame. The various engine and environmental sensors supply the computer information which alters the basic fuel pulse width to correct the air fuel ratio according to input from the engine's oxygen sensor or in some cases multiple oxygen sensors. Honda refers to this modification of the basic fuel pulse width as compensation. The signals that affect compensation or pulse width modifications are received from the coolant temperature sensor, the intake air temperature sensor, the throttle angle sensor, the vehicle speed sensor, the oxygen sensor, alternator input, a starter signal, and the atmospheric pressure sensor. These input signals operating together form a feedback loop with the oxygen sensor supplying information as to the outcome of the combustion process. The computer alters the air-fuel ratio to meet emission and drivability requirements. The next system controlled by the engine computer is the emission system. This system should contain no surprises. A conventional PCV valve is utilized to remove crankcase fumes and burn them in the engine's combustion process. The system also contains a conventional evaporative emission system utilized to trap fuel fumes in a charcoal canister. The canister purge system contains a two-way check valve and a thermal valve. The thermal valve opens at 131 degrees Fahrenheit or 55 degrees centigrade to direct manifold vacuum from the throttle body to the purge control valve mounted on top of the charcoal canister. The EGR control system is also fairly conventional in layout. The engine control computer is programmed with the ideal operating conditions for the EGR system. Remember, the job of the EGR system is to reduce NOx by recirculating exhaust manifold gas into the intake system to reduce combustion temperature. The system contains an EGR valve, a constant vacuum control valve, an EGR control solenoid valve, and the engine computer along with its sensor inputs. Basic signals to the computer from the EGR valve position sensor, crank angle sensor, MAP sensor, coolant temperature sensor, throttle angle sensor, and atmospheric pressure sensor supply the computer the information necessary to make the correct EGR solenoid control valve vacuum signal adjustment. As you can see from this diagram, the position of the EGR at any point during the operation is read by the engine control computer through the EGR position sensor. The engine computer, utilizing temperature, manifold pressure, atmospheric pressure, throttle angle, and RPM signals, then modifies or controls the vacuum through the CVC valve and the EGR control solenoid valve to allow for a repositioning of the EGR valve. The third system controlled by the engine control computer is the ignition system. The timing function can be either centrifugal, vacuum, electronically controlled vacuum, or fully electronic. The components in the ignition system consist of a traditional appearing spark plug wire, rotor, and cap. Two different coils are utilized. One, a conventional style oil-filled coil, and two, epoxy style coil. A number of different distributors are utilized. A Hitachi style where the ignition module or igniter is mounted inside the distributor body. Another style where the igniter assembly is located outside of the distributor. It should be noted that the distributors and their subcomponents are not interchangeable. There is no sense in explaining centrifugal advance or even vacuum advance at this time, but an explanation of Honda's method of controlling the vacuum advance electronically is important. The computer takes input sensor readings for engine RPM, throttle angle, and engine coolant temperature and responds with a signal to the ignition control solenoid valve. The distributors have two separate vacuum advance diaphragms connected to manifold vacuum. 
One of the diaphragms is connected to a solenoid valve called a cold advanced solenoid valve. The system uses two magnetic pickups. One signals top dead center, TDC. This signal is used to control injection timing for each cylinder and it is also used to monitor the speed of the engine. The cylinder position pickup, CYL, identifies the location of number one cylinder for a computer reference pulse. That's it. We have covered the basic components and functions of the Honda electronic engine control system. Now, to repair some common problems. Hands-on experience may be the best teacher, but through the use of video, we can simulate everything except your hands actually touching the components. Ready to begin? Since Honda, Acura, and Sterling contain the same components and the engine computer control system operates in the same manner from model to model and year to year, we will reference each of the vehicles throughout the remainder of the program. This will give you the best view and feel of how to work on each particular engine style. Since Honda vehicles contain a sophisticated onboard diagnostic system, Whenever you are confronted by a problem on any of the late model Honda vehicles, you should first utilize common sense and follow a logical approach to troubleshooting. Always question the customer and determine exactly what his complaints are. Remember, you cannot repair or troubleshoot a problem that does not exist. After thoroughly questioning the customer, it is advisable to road test the vehicle to see if you can verify the problem. The next step in a logical approach to troubleshooting would be to check the obvious. Do a routine inspection of the battery and charging system. Check the antifreeze and coolant levels. Remember, for the computer to operate properly, it must have an accurate temperature signal. Check the air filter to make sure that it is not restricted. Since Honda does not use anything unusual in their ignition system, and depending on the problem, you should do a thorough secondary voltage check of the spark plugs, wires, distributor cap and rotor. Test the same as any electronic ignition system. Obviously, if the vehicle won't start, as is the problem on this Honda that has just been towed into your shop, obtaining a secondary voltage readout on the ignition system is a moot point. Let's diagnose the starting problems on this Honda by following a logical approach to troubleshooting. With the visual inspections complete, a quick check of the secondary system reveals that there is no spark. What is the next step? What do we look for? Since this vehicle has a very sophisticated onboard diagnostic system, let's try to utilize it to help diagnose the problem. Remember, the onboard diagnostic system cannot troubleshoot everything. There are certain components that have to be checked utilizing simple test equipment, like a digital volt ohm meter. Since a no start condition exists, the first thing we need to do is eliminate the possibility of a defective engine control computer. You should be aware of the fact that the dashboard indicator warning light memory will be erased each time the ignition switch is turned off. However, if a component is still malfunctioning the next time the ignition key is turned on, the light will remain on. In any case, the computer memory will not be erased when the key is turned off. The diagnostic LEDs on the computer will continue to signal the appropriate trouble code whenever the ignition key is turned on. You don't need to turn on any switches to check out the system and the computer. This is an important step on a vehicle that won't start but will turn over. Follow this procedure. Turn on the ignition switch. The dash warning light should come on for about two seconds. If the warning light does not come on, first check fuse number 11. This fuse supplies power to the clock as well as the ECU. It is located in the engine compartment. Next, check for a blown fuse number 2. This fuse also powers the backup lights, the turn signals, and the fuel gauge. Next, check for power availability to the computer on terminals A17, B6, A2, and A4. Caution! Always use a high impedance digital voltmeter or Honda's breakout box. Next, check ground at A6. If power to each of the pins is available with the ignition key on and there is no dash warning light for two seconds after turning on the key, the ECU has malfunctioned and it must be replaced. Since we do have a dashboard indicator light for two seconds after the ignition key is turned on, 
the computer seems to be okay, and it is time to check the diagnostic codes on the engine computer. Honda has used three different LED arrangements for the diagnostic LEDs. One utilizes four red LEDs. As you can see from this illustration, the right-hand bulb indicates a one or unit position when lit. The next light indicates a two when lit. The next bulb indicates a four when lit. And the last light bulb indicates an eight when lit. Let's follow this through and illustrate codes. A code one, a code two, a code three, a one and a two, a code four, a code five, a four and a one, a code six, a four and a two, a code eight, just the eight light bulb, a code nine, an eight and a one, etc. A second method to check codes depending on the year and model has only one red LED. The third method has one yellow LED and one red LED. The single red LED on these vehicles flashes for codes, not the yellow LED. Count the number of flashes to determine the diagnostic code, like this code four. We have removed the seat from this vehicle to assist in viewing the LEDs. Normal procedure is to move the seat to its most rearward position to view the lights. Also note that the cover has been removed from the computer. This is not a recommended practice, and it is not necessary to repair the vehicle. It has been done for illustration purposes only. We have an eight code. Consulting service literature shows that an eight is a problem with the crank angle sensor or the sensor wiring. The way Honda sets up their codes, this could signify either an open circuit or a shorted circuit. Also, Honda states that a crank angle sensor code may be triggered in error by receiving a false code from the spark plug wires. A faulty spark plug causing a misfire or a bad spark plug wire can trigger a false code eight. Also, make certain that the spark plug wires do not touch the distributor pickup harness. Let's follow through diagnostics on the crank angle sensor circuit. The first step is to unplug the distributor harness. Measure the resistance between the white terminal and the orange terminal at the sensor. Specifications call for 650 to 850 ohms. Next, measure the resistance between the white and orange terminals and the crank angle sensor housing. Resistance should be 100,000 ohms or greater. Next, let's check the other sensor. Remember, there are two pickups. Measure the resistance between the orange wire with the blue hash and the white wire with the blue hash. Resistance specifications call for 650 to 850 ohms. Recheck the terminals for grounding against the distributor housing. Resistance should be 100,000 ohms or greater. A problem. We are measuring less than 8,000 ohms. The sensor assembly will have to be replaced. In certain vehicles, the entire distributor will require replacement. With the sensor replaced and the wires reconnected, turn on the ignition key and see if the engine will start. Now that the engine is started, we should recheck the ignition timing. Disconnect the vacuum hoses from the distributor vacuum advance assembly and plug the hose ends. Recheck the engine idle speed. If it is necessary to move the distributor, loosen the two retaining bolts. Turn the distributor to the correct timing position and retighten. Now that the repair has been completed, we should clear the diagnostic code from the ECU memory. With the engine shut off, remove fuse number 11 for approximately 10 seconds. Reinstall the fuse and turn the ignition key on. The LED on the computer should be off. Now that we have rectified the starting problem on this Honda, you should keep in mind that we have checked the engine computer itself through some simple observations and voltage checks. Second, we have isolated the distributor sensor pickup problem utilizing the onboard diagnostic system and an ohm meter. So let's quickly look at another item, the igniter or ignition module. It could have been the cause of the no start problem. With the key off, Remove the igniter cover and pull out the igniter unit. It plugs into the distributor. With the key on, 
check the voltage between the BU1 terminal and ground. It should show battery voltage. Next, check BIY and the ground. This should also show battery voltage. Next, measure the resistance between the G and the BU2 terminal, the pickup coil. Pickup coil resistance, if you recall, should be approximately 750 ohms. Now, to check the igniter itself, we will measure across the A and B terminals on the igniter pin. We should have continuity in one direction. Reverse the leads. It should measure an open circuit in the other direction. Next, connect the positive voltmeter lead to the D terminal and the negative probe to the igniter case. The resistance should be 50,000 ohms or greater at approximately 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Remember, if you have to replace an igniter, always wipe a coating of silicone grease or heat conductive grease similar to that used on General Motors ignition modules between the igniter and the distributor unit. The only other components remaining in the ignition system are the spark plug wires, distributor cap and rotor, and the ignition coil. And I'm sure you already know how to check out those components. One additional system of controlling the ignition timing is used on the late models. These vehicles utilize a fully computerized electronic timing control assembly. On these vehicles, the computer takes various sensor readings, processes the information, and sends an output to the ignition timing control unit. The ignition timing unit uses the incoming signal from the computer to control the igniter module. The igniter then controls the primary current of the ignition coil. This system uses a different distributor and a cam angle sensor driven by the camshaft. This concludes working on the Honda electronic engine control system. As you have seen, the system is not difficult to repair utilizing onboard diagnostics and some simple test procedures. I would like to take this opportunity on behalf of Standard Motor Products and its training department to thank you for purchasing this video, and we hope you will consider us for your future replacement parts needs.